I work at electronics and computers, and so the thoughts of me being able to build a house seemed kind of crazy, but I just saw no alternative. There's no way I could afford hundreds of thousands of dollars for paying a house to get built. It was that simple. It was just, oh, here's this cool thing, something that survives a tsunami. Someone should build it. Maybe I can build it. The idea really is to use your hands. They haven't invented anything better than these, and a computer isn't going to build your house for you. Did you have building experience when you started this? Very, very little. The whole thing comes up. When I woke up, there was a ceiling here and the wall on every side. So you can just prop your feet up on the wall. <laughs> this is almost like living in a stairwell. Yeah. <laughs> so here's the bed, just a little over my head sitting. You simply pull down two fingers. Guests come, you pull the moving wall out. That creates a whole nother room here. Where the... <laughs> so we're in the guest bedroom. I think that the onus is on us as creators of things, and that should be everyone, to build the systems we want. This is basically like an experimentation lab. It turns out we know remarkably little about how to optimally grow different things. That's kind of problematic. This system here, this one's aeroponics, fogponics. Basically, here's the fish tank. The water will run from here, and there's a pipe going down the back here. The bacteria eats up the fish poop, basically, and then that's what uh, gives the nutrients to the plant. It's complaining. My tank is not full. You know what? My garden is sending tweets. My garden has an own page on Facebook. You can program your computer and the technology around you to take care of your own basic needs. We took the car, we took all the benefits of a car, the safety and convenience, and we took you know, the efficiency and the romance of a motorcycle, and we just kind of put them together. People have a concept of skateboarding as being, you know, the Tony Hawk. This is like a little bit different. We really consider this being like a new type of vehicle. All right, here we go. I have a car. I traveled 8,000 kilometers in Brazil and was finding so many craft people in my country. Like, so I was like thinking, you know what, I want to set something. So you can kind of like sit and rock. I like making stuff and cardboard has been definitely this material I've been obsessed with for a while. This becomes maybe like a CD shelf. I think it's really important to continually be designing and iterating and making new things. A lot of times when you buy a bar of quote unquote soap, they don't call it soap. They call it a cleansing bar. Here comes the wax because they use a, a surfactant like a sodium lauryl sulfate that are maybe derived from petroleum. Or they're cheaper to mass produce than soap. With self-sufficiency, you never get there. You never become self-sufficient. I mean, we tried back in the 70s. So here is this very rare book. Access to Tools was the subtitle of the Whole Earth Catalog. I think the more you can do for yourself, the better. You know, like here's the wheat in here. And then here's the grinder. So it takes the grains and it makes them into oatmeal. It's, it's a direction, self-sufficiency. These are for making small batches of pickles. You do what you can do, as much of it as you can. Here's two pigeon breasts. I, I hunt pigeons. So that's a crock for sauerkraut. And that's been over six months. This is a sourdough-based dough that I feed, incorporating really the bacteria that's in your kitchen. It's just in the air. What is it? We've gotten the wild yeast out of the air. Everything down here is one of ten different types of sauerkraut. People don't really tend to think about their food as being alive. You can even start to sense the speed of the bubbles. It's very much breathing. It very much is alive. It's my house. It's not finished, but... <laughs> it's growing. Oh. It's alive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, we have not a lot of money. We are young. We want to, to make things thinking about how much money I've blown in rent, being like, wow, in the four and a half years I was in LA, I spent $50,000 on rent. This house costs 30,000 in materials. So I bought this school bus and turned that into a whole little house. You know, it's mobile, it's mobility. You know, we're humans, we're crazy. You know, I, I want to do one thing one day and I'm, I'm like, oh, wow, I want to do something completely different the next day. If I own a house with five bedrooms and a mortgage when I'm paying $5,000 a month on it, you got a big anchor or a ball and chain. We shouldn't have to live in the middle of nowhere to afford to build our own house. We should be able to do that in the middle of one of the most expensive cities in the world. So yeah, it's pretty much like my dream post-apocalyptic cyberpunk setup. The main reason I came to this area is because no building restrictions whatsoever. And that's really hard to find in this country. 
You know, I've had it in apple orchards. I've had it sitting in front of Whole Foods for days. Detroit, we threw away 20,000 houses last year. Cincinnati, we threw away 14,000 houses last year. All over the country, the industrialized cities are falling apart and crumbling, and we're throwing it away instead of transforming that into the treasures of the children in the future. This whole structure has been made by students over the years, and it's just all made out of bottles, cans, and tires. So this is the first container building in Connecticut. The second project is the second container building in Connecticut. People may not think that this is an urban place. We're way out here, 70 miles from Phoenix, out in the middle of the desert, but this is an example or prototype. You don't have to have some big, dramatic, massive high rise to get that feeling of elevation and sort of being, you know, floating over the earth. The front's all polycarbonate roofing. It's like affordable modern. People are paying me to do this, are you kidding me? This is awesome, you know, it's like a dream job. I don't know, it sounds lame. Like, I just enjoy life and I have a lot of fun with doing what I do. And uh, I don't know, it's like I wish life was much longer because there's so many things. At the end of the day, what do you need for a living? You need a nice, comfortable mattress, running water, shower, and a stove to cook something. You don't need so much more stuff. 